tired of waiting on you. Love you too. Slow poke. I'm having technical difficulties. Your face is a technical difficulty. Oh. I know it's low hanging fruit. <laughs> I'm actually kind of proud of you. Why? Welcome back, everybody. We hope you had a good couple of days. I know you haven't had a good couple of days since you haven't been here with us. So, welcome back. Speaking of not being able to be with us, since I know you have Physical Therapy Friday, we're just going to go ahead and automatically schedule Friday's stream for tomorrow. Because wow. I'm totally good thing I don't have anything planned for tomorrow morning. Do you? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I might have, and you're just like, yeah, fuck you guys. Well, that's when you go and go, oh, hey, yeah, no, I got something planned. Then I go, well, fuck. <laughs> no, I, like, I can be reasoned with. Jesus. It's just, I'm, I'm getting frustrated with only being able to do this twice a week and barely making any progress. Well, Ow! Well, what? What? Physical therapy isn't forever. Yeah. So. Well, all things must come to an end. Yeah, so there's no reason to be upset by it. Yeah, but see, I'm, I, I need, I, it's, it's getting more and more difficult controlling my creative flow, and now I'm just, I'm thinking too far into the future. Don't get me wrong, I understand why you're upset. Alright, that's not my issue. My issue is I've been up since four thirty this morning. Jesus Christ, man! You, you've been up an hour after I went to bed. <laughs> so karma, I need to get back on second shift schedule because I'm on first shift schedule because eventually leaves for work and everything. And I'm like, this is killing me. Because like, I don't want to do anything productive at five o'clock in the morning, so I just lay in bed to like seven thirty, eight o'clock. <laughs> I don't know. Should I start being productive? Probably. But. What the hell productive things are there to do at 4 a.m.? I mean, there's a lot of cleaning that he's done. But. Ravioli, what are you doing? Welcome to the stream. My name is Eric. His name is James. Yo. And we stream Creative Challenge on Minecraft Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, unless I'm busy. And then we schedule a Thursday. That's the thing. So. Well, you won't reschedule Friday to Saturday. I can't reschedule Friday to Saturday. Actually, I could this week. I already made a creative, so. Actually, I can't this weekend. That's right. See? I know what I'm doing. 
Ravioli, what are you fucking doing? Why do you gotta be a menace? I also do uh, super liminal streams, and I'm recording another stream. Not a stream, but I'm recording a series today. I'll be out on YouTube next week. Uh, super liminal part three will be out this Friday. Uh, Monday stream will be out today on YouTube's uh, for the Minecraft challenge. So, head over to my YouTube, guys. It's uh, EVL1Games, kind of like this one is. And there's going to be a bunch more fun things heading over there, so come check us out. I'm sorry that's very monotone I'm building. So. You sound so invested. You want to know what I am invested in? I started a new show today. Okay. It's, uh, a loud milk. Or louder milk or something like the guy the character's last name is Louder Milk. I think it's the show's called Loud Milk. Because yeah, but you know. Uh he 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 uh he is an AA meeting L leader. And it's just really, like, I feel like if you're a fan of like Seinfeld, you probably like it. But. I don't really like Seinfeld. Wow. What do you got against Seinfeld? I just, Jerry Seinfeld is annoying. Because of his voice? It's not just his voice. It's like his whole personality like, I, I'm not sure how to, when he talks, he consistently ends his sentences as if he's asking a question. Maybe he is asking a question. No, like, even if he's not asking a question, like, he still has that question inflection. <laughs> I don't know, it just I don't know, it maybe it's just not not exactly my type of humor. Oh yeah, that's fine. What comedian speak? Um I like John Mulaney. Okay. Uh Bo Burnham. Okay. Uh, Burt Kreischer. Burt Kreischer, there we go. Love me some Burt Kreischer. Um, other than that, I don't really, like, listen to comedians. Oh, I love a good comedian special. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Like I said, like, I, I watched... Ooh, um, Brad Williams. Gotcha. Brad Williams is hilarious. I think I I can't remember which one we watched, but I think I damn near pissed myself. It was so funny. <laughs> I get that way with uh, Burton Pryor's jokes sometimes. Oh my super... god! If you have not seen his movie The Machine, you... I liked it. Karma did it. I'm I'm sorry, but besides you, I think Karma has bad taste. I, I think I agree. I mean, she likes Burt Kreischer. Like, she thinks she's hilarious, but she just doesn't like the movie. Well, everybody's entitled to their opinion, even if they're wrong. Uh, we're, we're talking about the girl who has not seen um, any of the Jason Bourne films or anything, so... I mean, neither is my wife, but... Wow! Okay, so she's got a very, very different taste in films than I do. 
I get that, but Jason Bourne, I mean, that, that's a, see, that's, that's a staple. No, see, that's the thing. Like, I see, it, it works for you and me, but it doesn't work for her because, like, she's not, like, when she, growing up, she wasn't, she wasn't the person that watched a bunch of, like, action-y type movies. Right. And so, like, I've, I've slowly been kind of, like, showing her some of, like, the action movies that, like, you know, I grew up watching. I just haven't gotten around to showing her Jason Bourne yet. I, I'm not even sure if she would actually like it. Oh, such a good movie, though. Like, even if you just look at it from a non-action film standpoint, like, the film has everything you want in a film. Corrupt government, trying to take down its people. And Matt Damon. But see, that's the thing. I I don't th- I I don't know if she knows who Matt Damon is. How do you not know who Matt Damon is? What well, she again uh, is not like a movie buff. I get that, but he's been in so many different genres of movies. And and, and it, it shows. If she did know who Matt Damon is, she probably doesn't know his name is Matt Damon. I I don't know. It, it's like there's a bunch of actors I love. I can't even tell you what their first name is. But like, I would die to watch anything that they're a part of. I suck with names, but like, so I I understand that part. But like, she might not know who Matt Damon is, but she knows who Matt Damon is. You know. Like I said, it's possible. Uh, finished watching Echo last night. Oh, yeah. I still haven't, I I, I still haven't started that. I looked it up. They are coming out with a season two. And... If I had to say one thing about it without <clears throat> leaving any spoilers or anything, there's not as much Daredevil as I thought there would be. Well, yeah, the show's called Echo, not Daredevil. Yeah, but, like, reading all the things leading up before, like, the, the show came out, there was a whole bunch of things like, how are Daredevil and I just supposed to be talking to each other and everything? Like, yeah. how Daredevil was supposed to be this large presence in it? Because it's in the Daredevil universe. So. I wouldn't um, limit it to just being in the Daredevil universe. Like. He's in, like, one episode. Okay, I'm not arguing with that. I'm just saying that, like, I wouldn't <coughs> limit it to being within just the Daredevil universe because, you know, Daredevil is now canon. This is just. No, the... I, I don't mean that. I, I mean, like, you know how everyone has their own, like, little area within the Marvel universe? Like, Captain America, he has his stuff, and Spider Man, he has his stuff going on, and. Yeah. Well, that Daredevil, he has his thing going on. It's just his thing actually involves more superheroes and villains than what other superheroes have based right now. Like, because Spider Man, he has, you know, uh, <coughs> why am I blanking on names? He has. What? What's the plot? The, uh,. The sign creature. Venom? Yeah, he has Venom and Carnage and all that. Even though he hasn't faced him yet, we know it's in the same universe. Uh, <coughs> and, but like, it's really just Spider-Man and Venom and uh, Carnage and Morbius. We don't know if he's in the same universe or not. So. But then, you get the Daredevil... And Daredevil has what the Iron Fist, uh, Echo, and 
a few other people, and then you got Fisk, and you got a bunch of other criminals, and he had, it was a more established, you know what I mean? Kind of. But yeah, he, it, it, it's a Marvel Universe, but inside that universe, it's the, it's the Daredevil verse. <laughs> It's a different branch inside of it that sometimes latches onto the other branches, like and Spider-Man. <laughs> so yeah, I ate vegan ice cream this morning. Why would you torture yourself like that? Well, because we got it from one of those food pantries. With me being off work and us not being able to afford that many groceries or anything. So we're eligible for those now. Um, And it wasn't that bad. You're going to stop making words come out your mouth. No, you want to know why it wasn't that bad, though? (laughs) Because it was coffee flavored, so I'm sure the coffee over overtook a lot of the non dairy flavored. You know what I mean? You can take your demon ice cream. I demon ice cream. <laughs> and you can stick it where the sun don't shine. I, have you have you tried non dairy ice cream before? I'm not trying vegan anything. You know why? Because yeah. That's stupid. Oh, so you don't want to have lunch with me tomorrow. <laughs> no, if we were going to have lunch, I would not be eating anything vegan. I got a couple of vegan patties in my freezer right now. Well, I'm going to pass because why the hell would I <laughs> eat a plant? <laughs> God damn it. Okay. <laughs> mm. Ow. Why would I eat plant based meat when I can eat real meat? Like, um, it's better for the universe or something like that? No, it's not. Have you heard everything that goes on in trying to make vegan food? It's so much worse for the environment than just eating animals. Yeah, but you're not killing cows. Yeah, but you know what you are killing? A fuck ton more. I'm not arguing with you, because I agree, but... Oh, it's just the the meat that the food pantry had. (laughs) So, I'm not going to eat it. I, I'm going to leave it in the freezer so I get back to work and give it to Matt. <laughs> that, and I also have a vegan chicken nuggets, too. Not the nuggets. The nuggets. Not you, Nugget. <laughs> Eric has demon food. Yeah, you don't have to try to convince me that the vegan nuggets are bad, because I know for a fact they are. But we live in a fucked up world, so. start reopening uh, Last Outdoors man said you rehiring me or what 
Um, yeah, I guess. Weed whacker with my income tax return, so I don't have to worry about the batteries dying on me every five minutes. That's good. Just remember that was the, that was the issue I was having <laughs> when I started working on your lawn, but you guys need to chill, okay? Just chill. No, stop trying to grab that. That's not a toy. Why do you want to fucking play with everything that isn't a toy? You have so many toys. What are you up to? Oh, just play some dirt. What about you? Play some stone. <laughs> how the turntables turn. That's not how, that's not the quote. Yeah, that's my quote, though. You, it's, ugh, come on, Eric. If you're going to quote it, you got to quote it correctly. Well, I wouldn't know that, because I've never seen The Godfather. you seen The Godfather? Oh, yeah, that's right. i got to start rethinking my relationships. Wow, tell me how you really feel. I need you to watch The Godfather one time. It's not going to happen. Why? Because it's, it, it, it's, it's boring. It's Fine as a classic. David, David Blue, Bueller's Day Off. Love Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, 
Groundhog Day. Never seen it. But I I under, I understand the premise. I've seen many, many movies try to imitate it. I, I, just, I, I don't think I would get or I would feel anything towards the original because I've yeah, seen so many. Excuse me for, you know, watching movies that came out during my time. Terminator. Seen it all, love it all. Well, okay, not love it all, but most of it's good. Die Hard. I recently just watched the first one. I have not seen the second one, but I have seen the third one. But I haven't. Okay, so like, (laughs) I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know why. But, like, the third one is all I've ever known up until this last shutdown. Like, I don't I don't know how I've only ever seen the third one, but that... Right, that so hold up. You're telling me the very first one you ever saw was the third movie? Yeah. I think it had happened... Because, like, it was, like, on TV or something, and then I found out we had it, and so I just kind of, like, watched all of it, finally, and I just, I didn't think anything of it, and I never, I just never took the time to go watch the other ones. I mean, did you like the third one? Yeah, I love the third one, and, you know, like I said, I, we, we watched the first one. I liked it. She didn't. I mean, like you said, she's not an action movie person, so. Like, honestly, it's it's definitely up there in terms of, like, great Christmas movies. Oh, 100%. And anybody who's... Definitely a movie, you gotta watch for Christmas. Um, let's see. I know you watch Spaceballs. Damn straight. <laughs> I could quote that movie to death. I have a psyche brain. I remember classic films here. Um, I know you don't like horror films. You've probably never seen The House of 13 Ghosts. I have seen 13 Ghosts. Have you? Yeah. Did you like it? Wait, we're referring to the movie with Matthew Lillard in it, right? Yeah. Yes, loved it. The house made of glass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With all the fucking Latin written on the walls? Yeah. Yes, love that movie. Great movie. Uh, And who said I don't like horror movies? You said you're not that into them because they're all cheap jump scares. No, I I said that about modern horror movies. So you like classic? I mean, I've seen uh, every single Nightmare on Elm Street. I've seen, like, half of the Friday the 13th movies. Um, uh, I have not... I've seen the original trilogy of Hellraiser. Okay. So the I, I, I couldn't tell you anything about them because I literally watched them once. But I think it was definitely the first one. The first one had such a fucking gruesome practical effect, it literally gave me nightmares as an adult. That's how you know it's a good movie. Um, I know you can do movies. How many of the Friday the 13th? Uh, all of them. Or no. Oh, no, 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 my bad. Not all of you said Friday the 13th. I've uh, seen the original trilogy. Um, yes, I did see the one in space. Uh, do you count? Would you count Freddy vs. Jason as a Freddy movie or a Jason movie? I, I, that's more of a Jason movie. Yeah. Because Jason was like the first one. Yeah. Yeah. 
What do you mean by his domain? Like it happens. Doesn't it happen in his town? No. His town is literally, his killing is literally constricted to Crystal Lake. Freddy is the one that wakes him up from the dead via a dream and says, yo, the, ta- the people, the kids in this town, his town, it's Freddy's town. And he's like, I've been naughty and they need to get their asses murked. Go do it. And Jason's just like, yeah, I'm a zombie. But no, yeah, but it was, one of the major fight scenes is at Crystal Lake, though. Yeah, the fucking ending of it, because they take him back to Crystal Lake. But the most, the, the most of the movie takes place in Haddon, or no, Haddonfield's the one for Halloween. I can't remember the fucking town name. Spring, Springfield. I want to say it was Spring Spring Springwood. There it is. It's the Springwood Slasher. That's what it was. It's been forever since I've seen it. But for some reason, I remember it prominently being like a Jason thing. Nope. I, I, I definitely want to say it's, it's, it's more of a Freddy movie because it literally opens up and Freddy's narrating. I know he narrates the beginning. He's literally telling his story and how he's pissed that people have forgotten him. It's like, well, bud, that kind of happens when you sit there and you you murk a bunch of people. They tend to get upset about that. Just saying. Just saying, I just have this UB now. By the way, I'm pissed, okay? Because I, I don't know if you remember me telling you, but I had an idea for like... I a, saw it, I saw it. Yeah, and it was fucking announced by Peacock. Hey, my idea <laughs> So what exact what exactly is this is this literally just like Jason's origin story? Yeah. Like how he died at Crystal. Do we really need that? Especially as a TV series. As a TV series, yeah, but not as a movie. It would be it would be easier as a movie. Yeah, it would be easier, but who wants to watch that movie? Who wants to watch that TV show? Oh, you know, you know they're going to do it in some stupid way, like maybe him as a kid was a detective or some shit. Him as a kid was a fucked up, mangled looking bitch who was teased relentlessly until fucking they pushed him into a fucking lake and he drowned. That's the story of Jason. Bullying killed him and then he came back as a fucking possessed demon fucking shit thing, whatever, I can't remember, like, he, I, there's like a fucking whole storyline about him being like this demon, like, like his body or something was possessed or something from hell. Was it by his mother? No. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Like I said, like I said, I seen the original trilogy. And then I seen Jason X. Right. There's like four or five Jason movies in there in between. Yeah, not all of them are the best either, so. Yeah, but that's how you get with any franchise that has the, a large number. Like, there's going to be a few of them that are just kind of mid to bottom tier. That's true. Like, um, with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, like... Oh, uh, which one was it? I think it was actually Freddy's Final Nightmare or something like that. Like, they fucking, they, like, redid his story. And, like, they changed details about, like, his life and everything. Right. And now it's, like, all of a sudden he's got a kid. And it's just, it was really, really weird. And it completely. That's, like, the, the 
Halloween where they like tried to revamp the character for some reason that doesn't need to be done. Oh, you're talking about Rob Zombie's version? Yeah. That's that's literally the only version I know. Like Is I that really? I, I I've seen okay no not not the only one I've seen um I think it's Halloween H two O oh that's a shit I just I don't know I I you need to go back and watch the OGs that's, uh, not not that the OGs keep the same exact storyline either but well some... I mean I I can't remember who who I who did it. But, like, this most recent batch of Halloween movies, like, there was, like, a... I think it was a trilogy of them. It actually continues the story from, like, the original. Yeah, that was one of the complaints about it, Because they had changed everything so much, and they're like, why are you going back? Because it was changed so much, the vision was lost. You have something going on for that long of time with so many directors and different uh, production companies hopping in. It's going to change. Yeah. That's I'm... why it's so rare to see a, a thing like uh, Fast and Furious last as long as it has. Don't even get me started on Fast and the Furious. I'm, I'm pretty angry with it right now. So, um, within, like, the last couple of months, I, I've finally gotten around to watching, uh, 9 and 10, and, like, I understand, I, like, I've kind of, like, given up the idea of Fast and the Furious trying to do realism a long time ago. Right, right. Like, there was actually, um, a fan theory that kind of, like, Put the franchise into it. Off the table. It put the franchise into a kind of like a different perspective, and that's the, that's the perspective I'm watching these movies from now on in. Just because, like, it just it it, it makes sense in a really strange and bizarre way. Um, but no, fucking the ten. It ended on a cliffhanger. And I just, why? Why? Why do you do this to me? Well, honestly, they were so, they were so emotional when they announced that the, that the franchise was continuing on that I don't think they fully had it planned out when they did it. So I think they've just been coming up with stuff as they go along. <laughs> well, yeah, that that's no real surprise. Don't quote me or anything on it, because... Uh, I don't... Maybe it was a very smart guy, but... <laughs> but no, like... But, and another thing is that they just... They keep bringing dead characters back. It is annoying. I, I understand that point, but also at the same point, it's kind of like a, a, a sigh of relief that uh, they can still kind of remember where they started from compared to flying cars in outer space. What, what does bringing dead characters back to life have anything to do with remembering where they came from? Because there's just some kind of connection to... OG street racing and stealing TVs. I'm not saying it's the best connection, but there is. What the fuck connection. are you. Who are you talking about? What do you mean? Again, how does bringing characters back to life connect them to the original story? Like, I, I'm completely. Because they. Well, well, they brought back the, uh, the Tokyo Drift guy. Twice! Yeah. That's bullshit. Well, at least they know that story still in there somewhere. I could have just forgotten about it. I'm like, fuck you, man. We're flying cars in space. But no, they brought him back. 
Okay, no, see, that's... Okay, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Like, I'm, okay, so... Okay, no, I'm trying to put some kind of positive spin on there's no positive spin. It's just dumb writing. Like, yes, Han did die in the original... Like, like he did die in Tokyo Drift. That we know of. But then it was found out that Tokyo Drift was actually set further in the future, which is when they rebooted the series a little... Like, they did a soft reboot, and they redid Fast and Furious, and they brought him back, but it's in the past. He's alive. But then the timeline catches up with Tokyo Drift... And then he's supposed to be dead. Like, he's supposed to die. He was out for a whole fucking movie. Or two movies, actually. And then in Fast and Furious 9, they brought him back again. Like, I'm not talking about, like, them, you know, just the whole... He returned after he technically died in Tokyo Drift. Like, Han was a good character. I'm, like, I'm not mad about that. Um, because, you know, they rid a, wrote, wrote it away with it being like a fucking a prequel. Or, yeah, not a prequel, a sequel, but in the future. But, like, the fact that they the timeline caught up to where he was supposed to die. And he did die. But then he didn't die because fucking some stupid bullshit with super spy shit. Like, no. And then fucking Gal Gadot's character, who also fucking died, because she fell out of a fucking plane. She's not dead. Anything can happen in Fast and Furious. I understand what you mean. I just... This shit's fucking infuriating. I gotta continue it on somehow. They were doing just fine. Dom's a dad. He's teaching his kid how to do shit. Fucking, they introduced Dom's brother, which John Cena, which I didn't think I needed in the Fast and Furious franchise, but I'm happy that they did. That's a pretty cool detail. I think that if it wasn't for the Fast and Furious franchise, they would whole drama with Ben Diesel and The Rock that it would have went a whole different direction but that's just me it's just fragile masculinity oh yeah when you got biceps like that something has to be fragile well not to mention that both of them and I do mean both have it written in their contract that they can't lose fights yeah like like that's not exciting. Like no, not. sometimes the some somebody's gotta lose, guys. Like sometimes the hero just it, it has to happen. I mean, look at Infinity War. Right? Oh my God! Can you imagine if the whole MCU just ended after Infinity War? That would have been like. The single greatest mic drop in all of cinematic history. Yeah, I would have been. I would have cried for hours upon days upon years. Though. Like, like yes, that would have been emotionally devastating, and just straight up monstrous. But damn, that would have been a ballsy fucking move. It makes you wonder if they're, if they're going to do something like that when the time does come. Probably not. They're going to... There, there's so many comic books where just fucking everyone dies. If you anything, know. they'll probably... Like, I mean, obviously, you know, they're going to try to fucking ride this as long as they possibly can. And unfor- yeah. unfortunately, with a lot of fans not enjoying where the MCU currently stands, which is... Which I still don't understand. Right? Like, I don't understand why nobody is enjoying it anymore. Like, I am still fully invested. Like, yes, there are some things that I haven't gotten the chance to, like, watch. Like, Echo. I I fucking loved Echo. Like, I had goosebumps watching Echo. But, like, there's still, like... Fucking, the one that gets me is, like, a lot of people are just, like, they didn't like Quantumania, or they didn't like Love and Thunder, and I'm just, like, 
why? The I'm sorry, but did we even watch the same movies? Right. The only issue I had with Love and Thunder was the soundtrack. I mean, yeah, if they didn't, if they used any, like, at least a couple extra songs that weren't Guns N' Roses. Right. It's like, it's like don't get me wrong, Guns N' Roses, good band, but, like, I don't want, it's like watching Armageddon. Yeah. But instead of Guns N' Roses in that case, it's Aerosmith. And it's like, you're, you're coming out with a Thor. It's based off of, like, 70s, 80s rock and roll. But it's Guns N' Roses. <laughs> a band that now, by the way, the lead singer sounds like a dying cat when he tries to sing. Drugs will do that to you, homie. But, like... ACDC just played their first show in, like, 15 years. And they started off, like, almost just as good as they did back in the day. Like, you can't throw them in there, like... It's like there are a bunch of other, like, really good 80s rock bands that, if that's the sound you were going for, you could have added them. Easily. I just... There, I, I will agree... Because of that, to me, there are some red flags with that movie. But that's nothing to hold the actual cinematic experience away from the movie. You know? Yeah. And oh, I God. haven't seen Quantum Man yet, yeah, I'm not going to lie. But I need to. It's on Disney Plus, man. You can watch it for free. I get that, but it's one of the movies that Karma wants to watch but doesn't want to watch. So, like... No, Boy, you can't do that. It. Which is it? Do you want to watch it or do you not want to watch it? Like, she wants to watch... Like, she hasn't seen any of the Guardians of the Galaxies. Oh, my... G- Why? And she wants to watch it, but she doesn't want to watch it. So. What? I don't... I don't understand. Dude... If I could explain this stuff to you, I would, but <laughs> I don't know how. You, you know how easily I was able to convince my wife? Like, okay, so my wife's MCU journey <clears throat> started off chaotic as all hell. Like, because she hadn't, like, she she had, like, I'm, I'm assuming she knew about it, but as far as I knew, she had only watched, like, Maybe the original Iron Man. Her first movie in the MCU, <clears throat> besides Iron Man, was Infinity War. Oh, that's all right. That's because by the time <clears throat> you know Endgame was like four months away, I hadn't seen Infinity War yet. And I really wanted to watch it. It took some convincing. But I finally got her to watch it. She was instantly hooked. And you want to know how I explained the Guardians to her? Space pirates. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Space pirates. Like, yeah. what more information do you need? I mean, it's space pirates and eighties music, like I'm not seeing the uh, the issue here. And, and the Guardians of the Galaxy are one of the, is one of those movies that they they announce and you get really excited for, and is everything you thought it would be. So. Man, have you you haven't seen the third one, have you? I've seen the beginning of it, but man, I it's got my dad was watching it without her, so I gotta wait. It, I, you know what? It's her fault if she hasn't seen it because she doesn't want to watch it but wants to watch it. Like that's 
no, you shouldn't be held back because of that. Like, Guardians 3 is a fucking masterpiece. Like, it's, it's really emotional. That's why I get it. But the character you think is going to die isn't going to die. So I can give you that kind of relief. I'm just upset that the uh, director quit and wants to go work for me, you see. Yeah. But hey, maybe now we'll get some decent DC movies. No. <laughs> Which is another thing that I'm not sure, like, what people are bitching about. Like, I, I mean, I haven't seen everything oh, that... It. I haven't seen everything that DC's been putting out, but, like, I watched the Flash movie. Like, it wasn't awful. Maybe I just have a low standard for DC. The actor was awful. That was the issue. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will give you that. Ezra Miller is not the best... Like if we're talking if we're talking flash people, I really like Grant Gustin. And I heard something a rumor that he might be may come back, but I agree. He he's a great he's a great flash. I actually just saw a picture this morning of him. Like, I don't know if it was, like, real or if it was just, like, Photoshop or whatever. Because, you know, people with Photoshop are crazy talented these days. But um, it was, like, a, a rumor about there being a live-action Danny Phantom movie. Oh, yeah, with him being Danny Phantom? Yeah, and, like, the picture was a pretty decent quality of him just dressed as Danny. And it looked pretty good. I'm all for it, but I don't think I ever actually did it. Nickelodeon aren't really the revived types. Unless what the fuck are you a, talking about? Not like, not like in a good way. Like, yeah, they fucking did iCarly and um, that terrible version of the Fairy Odd Parents, but. Oh, are you talking yeah, about with the the Drake Bell movies? No, oh. I thought those were actually decent. The um, it, it, where he's all grown up and he gives the fairy odd parents to his niece or whatever, and so now the fairy odd parents are in a real um, in a real world, but they're still animated. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's not Paramount, it sucks. <laughs> mm. It's mm. one of those Paramount original things. I was going to say, like, they redid Spongebob with Camp Coral. They fucking redid the Rugrats. And that's after they already did, like, a sequel series for the Rugrats. Yeah, I forgot all of those because all of those sucked, so... Hey, you do not talk shit about Rugrats all grown up. Don't do that. I don't like it. Well, you know how earlier I said that everybody has opinions and shit, and you're uh, entitled to them, even if they're wrong? Well, you're wrong. Totally Oko needs to be remade, though. Yeah, that's another one. That's, surprisingly, that's one that I hadn't seen, but one that she had seen. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Codename Kids Next Door. Love Kids Next Door. But, unfortunately, I hadn't seen, like, a bunch of it. Uh -huh. And I can't find it anywhere with, like, ad-free and shit. Yeah, I don't know if it's on anything. It's on Cartoon Network, but... Like I said, it's, it's not ad-free. And I think you gotta, like, purchase it by the episode or by the season or some shit like that. And I'm I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna spend fifteen bucks per season when there's like seven seasons. Is it that big? I think so. 
I could be wrong. I you wouldn't be. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if I was wrong. Like looking back at the shows that I loved as a kid, I'm always surprised to find out that they only lasted like this, two seasons or three seasons. Like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. That was like three seasons, but God, man, I feel like that should have had like at least seven. Yeah. That's something. Well, uh, no, I don't want to say that because then it's going to happen and it's going to be awful. Yeah, I've already heard about them possibly remaking it and I was like, don't. Just don't do it. It's just, I don't think the, like, Ed, Ed and Eddie humor would fly nowadays. Yeah, that half the stuff that was in the show would not work today. And I think that's what would make it bad. Yeah. Like, if you can't maintain the humor that was already in place don't try to change it you, you would have to come out with a whole different show and no one wants that at all that's another thing that gets me is like when things like come into play under the same IP but like it's just a completely different thing like you like it or you don't like it? I don't like it. Like, that's why, that's how I've been feeling about, like, this latest batch of Resident Evil games. Because, like, it just, it doesn't, what do you, we, where is this all this fucking energy coming from, Ravioli? Like, why are you on crack? That's how I feel about most of Resident Evil stuff, that's how you feel about what? Most of the Resident Evil stuff. Like, I feel like they're holding on to anything just to try to keep the franchise alive. Um, I'm not going to argue that I that point. Like, the the franchise has gone really, really weird. But, like, their their latest, latest games, I think it's like 7 and 8. I don't know if they did 9 yet, but um, it's just, I don't know. At least all the other ones, like, they they had the same characters, like, the stories kind of meshed together, but then they just completely just, like, acted like these characters that have made the franchise what it is just don't exist anymore. Yeah, I don't know why they do that, so. And just, like, you know, there for... A little while, the hottest thing you can watch on any streaming service was Suits. Nope. Uh, well, like, it was, like, overly watched by, like, it was, like, the most watched thing on Netflix, and then it was so hot, it got picked up by other streaming services and everything, so I watched it, right? And I'm not gonna lie, I, I got into it, I thought it was a good show and everything. And then, years and years and years later, I find out they're working on a, another Suits project, but it's a whole different thing inside the universe that doesn't contain any of the original uh, actors or anything. And I'm so annoyed. <laughs> I hate... Okay, no, I can't say that, because I, I don't really hate that. But I... I think spin-off culture is out of hand. You, you can get a good spin-off. They, but they have to do it right. Like, uh, Young Sheldon? Yeah, that was gonna be, that was gonna be my example, was that Young Sheldon is getting its own spin-off, even though it itself yeah. is a spin-off. Yeah. But, like, if you look at it as just a spin-off to the original show, it was a good spin-off. I can't comment on that because I haven't seen Big Bang Theory. Oh, okay. And again, oh. like this one, like it's not that I didn't want to, it's just that when we decided that we were going to watch it, none of our streaming services were holding it. So, like I just oh. it, it's it's a show that flew under the radar for me. And I just, I haven't had a chance to 
watch it as an adult. Uh, you've seen Friends, right? Nope. You know about Friends, though, right? Unfortunately. Um, once upon a time, they had a spinoff called Joey about Joey from Friends. And it lasted two seasons because it sucked ass. That is a terrible spinoff. <laughs> But it, it is extremely rare that a spinoff is so good that it gets an additional spinoff based off the spinoff. Not that it's a bad thing, but... My worry is that the spinoff to the spinoff is going to be so terrible that it just gets cancelled. <laughs> Um, what the fuck are you doing? Jesus Christ, cat, will you calm the fuck down? Jesus. I'm almost done. What's almost done? I said I'm almost done. I only talked about this before, but the, I love the Arrowverse. Yeah, I unfortunately, like I was like really deep into it when me and Natalie got together, and after we got together, I just I I fell behind, and I just I haven't had the chance to go back through because I feel like so much has happened. Because like when I when I left. I think, let's see, I think Arrow was in season six. Flash was in, like, season four. And then uh, Legends and Supergirl, I think, were both in seasons two or three. And I know that Flash is, like, I know it just ended, and it's got, like, eight or nine seasons. So there's, like, a lot that I missed. Like, I missed the entire fucking Crisis on Infinite Earth series, which is so mad. I'm so mad about that because that was something I was, like, I was looking forward to. Anytime I saw anything about the Arrowverse, like, it was always talking about Crisis on Infinite Earth, and I'm just like, ah, that would have been such a good thing to check out. Yeah, because there was a Supernatural reference. Like, the show Supernatural? Yeah. That's weird. Um, you know the car? Baby, yeah. Um, they, they, they uh, walked up to a car in the middle of a, I believe it was like a forest or something, and it was the car, and they opened the back trunk and then opened up the little thing underneath and it had all the equipment and stuff in it. Okay, then. But legally, they couldn't say it was the car or anything, but... Um... I don't know if you've seen Lucifer yet. No. But Lucifer was in it. In the Arrowverse? Yeah. Because okay. Lucifer is a DC character. Oh, okay. Ooh, speaking Man, of... He's only in there for a split second, but... Speaking of, like, DC characters that just don't seem like DC characters... Fucking... You ever watch uh, the movie Constantine? Yeah, I know he's one. Yeah, if I, uh, apparently there's been talks about uh, Keanu coming back for a part two. I know he did an interview saying that he would love to come back and do it. 
but I didn't know it was like a official thing yet or not. I, I think I th- I think it's one of those things that James Gunn might try to do. I don't know though because James Gunn wants to do so much original stuff and I hate his timeline so much. I haven't even checked that out. I don't even know what it's like. Is he at least starting with something good? No, he's starting with the th- I I believe he's starting with the think. Okay. And like, why would you start your whole, your whole thing with the thing? Like, and then he, he doesn't want to have a Batman leading Batman first, which I understand. So, like, he's doing it based off of Batman's family, which is cool, but it's all animated. None of it's going to be live action. But then he's saying that all the animated stuff are in the same... in the same, uh... universe as the non-animated stuff. That's... That's weird. if If he has a movie with a Superman and the Superman makes an appearance on the animated Batman show, it'll be voiced by the Superman actor, it would just be animated. I mean, that's weird, but I guess maybe not the worst thing. And to me, it just sounds like you're trying to cut a lot of corners. Probably. Which, I like, I kind of understand because he's taking over this whole mammoth of a thing that was literally dying it's it's been dying for a while too yeah like if I remember correctly they sold the comic book section to (laughs) AT&T and then AT&T was like we're gonna hike the prices up and change the characters and if they don't sell we're discontinuing the comic books I don't know if they ever did or not but And one of the issues with the DC franchise in general is they've always just been terrible at picking people to play out the parts. And who are your examples besides Ezra Miller? Um, Let me fully think here. Are we fully going based on, like, acting abilities, or where are we going on that based off? Whatever you... that proves the point that you just made. Okay, well, every single... Every single Batman, based on the fact that they wanted to give up after two or three movies. I'm not saying they were all bad Batmans, because there was a good few Batmans in the bunch. But, just based on the fact that they, like, did their thing and walked out as fast as they could. (laughs) Um, the Superman that, the Superman that, uh, he plays the Atom on the Oh, Brandon Roth. Huh? Brandon Roth. Yeah, he was a bad Superman. I don't think he was a bad Superman. I just think he was in a bad Superman movie. See, that's that's another thing that you gotta like account for is that sometimes they're not exactly bad at what they do. It's just that what they do, like what they've been given to do, is bad. Like, yeah. like I've heard like a lot of people don't really like uh, Val Kilmer as Batman, but, like, I like him better than Christian Bale. Really? Yeah. Oh. Like, I like, I like... I gotta tell you what, that just chopped the shit out. 
like as 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 a whole, like I enjoyed Val Kilmer's Batman movie more than I did any of the Dark Knight series. Really? Yeah. Like I just Dark Knight was so I see I don't so I, authentic. I see I I, 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 I I don't know how to I don't want to say this. I just feel I, I don't know. I just I don't know if there is a way for me to word this at all. Your, your I, I just I feel like Christian Bale's Batman was just too gritty like I understand that Gotham is a dark and it's supposed to be like this fucking really just crime ridden place but like I feel like it went a little too hard on that Honestly, I don't think it went hard enough. Because if you ask me, the, the TV show Gotham went harder on how pretty Gotham is supposed to be. Well, that's weird that you say that, because I, I actually really liked Gotham. Oh, I mean, so did I. But, like, in terms of prettiness and darkness, like, I think they did a better job representing what Gotham should feel like. Because if you ask me, no matter what, like, I know Gotham is based off of New York, but in a, in a fantasy world that is ridden with the worst of villains you've ever seen, it should be darker and scarier. Yeah, but see, like, it didn't, got, like, it, like, it was gritty, but it wasn't dark, is what I'm saying. Gotcha. Like, it just, I don't know, if Batman just, it felt too military. Just, no, that's not the way I want to play. I don't, I, this is really difficult. Like, I don't know why this is so difficult. But, like, it's just, it's, it's a weird conundrum I'm sitting in right now. I mean, outside of that, like, it was too, like, it major masterpiece when it comes to like it, it was definitely a, a change in format when it comes to how superhero movies are viewed now though yeah I guess like it, it definitely led uh, a revolution in that and honestly I think that that's definitely one of the things that have helped the MCU become like, I, yeah, I get it, it's DC, but I think it's definitely one of the things that helps the MCU become that because they were able to look at that and be like, wow, they were able to do this thing over there in terms of cinematic uh, beautifulness. Like, we can do that here, too. Because if you ask me, a lot of the... Uh, the superhero films and everything before the Dark Knight trilogy was mostly just like... You better tread carefully. No, like, they were all great and everything, don't get me wrong, but they were all... We're, we're going to get to the point and um, it's going to be like... Say, like, out of these world, out of the world, but yet plainly simple things that are still going to shock everybody. But then when Dark Knight came around, like you had a lot of beautiful, amazing shots of the city and of uh, like the areas that you like it. They took their time with it, is what it feels like to me. But the problem and with the world building in that is like yes, in Batman Begins they tried very hard 
to, you know, make Gotham this, you know, this fantastical place, you know, with the monorail system and all that. And they tried to make it unique as a, a Gotham, but then they gave up after the second or after the first movie. And then instead of it feeling like Gotham, it just felt like Chicago. Yeah, I get that. I know they dropped the ball. Like, even they agreed that they dropped the ball on that at one point. Um, but to me, like, as I was immersed, because, like, when I watched something, I tried to immerse myself in it as much as possible. Uh, to me, like, looking back at the first film compared to the second and third one, like, yeah, there's obviously the tone difference, but, like, I can just sit there and look at it and, like, know that everything is still there, you know? Maybe it's just not being shown in the shots, which, again, is their laziness, but... And then you have the fact that everything was uh, very little CGI and more like fully action shot. Yeah. Meanwhile, a lot of the superhero films and everything before that was, a lot of it was green screen and CGI. When a lot of the Dark Knight was filmed on location and stuff like that. Again, Christian Bale's not not everyone's cup of tea when it comes to Batman because, um, you know, honestly, when like even when I think like when it comes to the most perfect Batman, like based off of what I grew up watching, like animated shows and everything, I think fucking um, what's his name, um, Affleck. I think he actually fits the bill a lot better. Definitely. I, I like the problem is like when it comes to Christian Bale for me, is like a problem that a lot of people face with like when they think of like who's the best Spider Man. And I feel like Christian Bale, he plays a good Bruce Wayne. Yeah. But he doesn't play a good Batman. And that may be controversial to somebody out there, but you know what? It's my opinion. I'm allowed yeah, honestly, to have it. To me, George Clooney was a better Bruce Wayne than he was a Batman, too. Uh, that's just because he played... I, I have an issue with George Clooney. I don't... I mean, we all have an issue with George Clooney's Batman in general, but... No, like, I just have an issue with George Clooney. Okay, gotcha. Because, like, he just... He's the same person in every role. That is 100% true, yeah. But it's not even... It's not even, like, a role anymore. It's just... It's... This is George Clooney. Yeah. And, like, I know... I know somebody out there will probably be like, well, Ryan Reynolds is the same way. It's just like... Yeah, but the difference is... Is that... Ryan Reynolds is actually charming. Like, he can pull off the same character every single time if, if he now, is the is same that, character. Huh? Is that just because we've grown up with Ryan Reynolds and see him morph into who he is today? Or is that just because of what Ryan Reynolds can do? Because there was a lot of love for George Clooney you know, back in the day. It's as, just because he's a good-looking yeah. guy. Right. And I, it just makes me wonder, like, are, do we look at him differently just because... Because, don't get me wrong, Ryan Reynolds is a good-looking guy, too. Like, I don't think anybody would him. argue with that. 
Like, I'm not gay, but, like... <laughs> you ain't gotta s- okay Eric are you so uncomfortable in your sexuality that you can't just say that Ryan Reynolds is a damn guy man no I'll be one of the first people to admit it like Ryan Reynolds is like <laughs> okay, I'm definitely gonna have to rewatch this video afterwards because <laughs> I need to see the face you just made when you did that. Oh, um, but I mean, if I ever had a chance, I'd go for it. <laughs> but no, like, like I understand where you're coming from. Like, like, are we like? Are we just like Ryan Reynolds brainwashed like people were with George Clooney? But I, I, I still want to say no to the fact to that, and simply just because like I think I think George Clooney like he like reached this layer of popularity, and then. Like, maybe early career, he was good at what he does. But, like, I feel like once he found out that he could just literally just act like himself and just be George Clooney every time, I feel like he got really pompous with it. And he just kind of did it because, like, hey, nobody's stopping me. Whereas Ryan Reynolds, like, he doesn't try to like do less than what he can like he still approaches every role every movie with the same level of enthusiasm and skill that he would any movie like he actually puts the effort in you're right I think I just think he ends up winding up in movies to where he can be himself. Which isn't a bad thing, but that that makes me afraid that the younger generation will just see him as the guy who plays himself in every movie. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure there's gonna be some people like that and but it's whatever. I mean, I mean, Affleck did get fucking ripped for Batman. Oh yeah, and he also had the the chin and everything that the at least the version I watched as a kid had. So, like, I, he just felt more right for the role. And if you were to ask me, like, was he a good Bruce Wayne? Or was he a good Batman? I think he was good at both of them. I I agree. Batfleck is definitely in like my top three Batmans. Okay, so who's your number two? Um, um, not gonna lie, it's probably the Val Kilmer. Yeah, he was. You know, honestly, I saw his Batman before ever knowing who he was. So, like, I thought, just in general, that he was just a good Batman because of it. But, But, uh, like, something that I really liked that was different about Ben Affleck as Batman is that because, like, most Batmans, including, you know, the Val Kilmer Batman, 
like before Ben Affleck had really really focused on Batman's like early career and talking about you know his parents' death like all the time. Like, the, oh yeah, but then it, he got to act like he was already established. Yeah, like I, I really yeah. liked the whole like this is an older Batman, like he's seen some shit, like and it, it's changed who he is as a Batman. Cause yeah. I I don't know I don't know if you noticed, but like as far as Batman's go, Ben Affleck was probably one of the most vicious. Batman's. Yeah. 100%. Like, he did stuff on screen that was just gnarly. And that's that, that, that was my thought before I went back and rewatched the Michael Keaton Batmans and noticed that he just spent a lot of time just straight up murking people. Yeah. Um, I'll be right back. I gotta wake my wife up. I is back. And now you're thinking about the app like Batman? Would have been the perfect transition to Batman Beyond. Definitely. Or shit, even using uh, Keaton again, since he returned for the Flash movie, which also another vicious Batman. Like, he did a lot of hurting in that movie. But, like, that, using Keaton, I think, would definitely be a really good transition for a Batman Beyond. Yeah, but, I don't know, just me thinking about Affleck as an older Bruce Wayne, I think he fits the bill a little bit more, but... Yeah, I could see it. Um... And then, he, then there was also the other fact, like when Suicide Squad came out, and you saw Ben Affleck's Batman the way that the villains see Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this superhero, he was like this really dark, scary bat, and I fell in love with that. Like that was awesome. Like yes, I want to be creeped the fuck out by Batman. Please, let me get more of that. <laughs> See, I think now what we're missing is there needs to be, like, similar to what they did in Suicide Squad, but I, I feel like there just needs to be, like, a Batman horror movie, specifically from the villain's perspective. Dude, I'm 100% down. Like, I, I feel like you could do something completely different with Batman by filming a Batman movie just from the villain's perspective. Yeah. And there's just a lot more you can do there. And honestly, I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. Well, now that we've spoken about it, I'm sure somebody will get oh, yeah, to it. Like just like my Jason idea, but, you know. <laughs> and I guess they kind of did it with Robert Patterson's Batman, because you know, he had the weird spooky, uh, I'm walking up to you thing going on. But, even then, it, 
it still wasn't on the level of scariness I feel like Batman would actually be in real life yeah like to me if Batman was really around he would enforce fear into people's minds before he got to them because that's that's how he protects himself because he's just a guy in a hockey suit basically you know which yes that is a reference to the Batman Begins trilogy but like if it's not for the suit he's just a human being and he could die and so one of the ways that he gets to his people faster is by playing mind tricks and scaring them (laughs) Yup, yup. And it's just... I don't remember exactly what went wrong with Ben Affleck's Batman, but... I will just forever be upset that we will never get to fully see what he could have done. Yeah. Fill out. But the, also the same thing with uh, Henry's Superman, too, because I feel like he was just starting to touch the surface of what he could do as Superman. Yeah. It really makes me mad that, like, James Gunn is just, like, straight up taking away all the people that would be really good for his future. Because, like, I don't, I don't know about you, but I completely and thoroughly enjoyed Black Adam. Yeah, it was a very good movie. Loved it. It was and amazing. The Superman thing at the very end was just like icing on the cake. But then he's just like, nope, Henry's fired. Rock's fired. Rock's fired. And I'm just like, you're really going to take away... Like, I understand it didn't do well in the box office, but, like, I just... I don't understand people nowadays. It's like, like, what are you guys not seeing about this movie that just right. makes you not enjoy it? <laughs> like, like, The Rock showed up on set in the, in the movie within, like, two... To five seconds, choke holds a dude and just electrocutes him to ash. Yeah, no, that was sweet. Like, you want to talk about, like, character entrances and establishing who the hell the movie's about. You find me a better, find me a better intro. I, I, I dare you. Like, in terms of the correct chemicals and stuff that you need for a movie to work, Black Adam had all of it. Like, like, the correct setup for his character and, uh, like, the correct storyline type and everything. Like, it had everything in it to make it work. But people were dumb. a lot of people were just put off by the fact that it was a rock playing a uh, superhero character, you know? And, and you know what the worst part is? Is that he had been cast for that character for over a decade. Yeah. Like, he fucking earned that role. He had it for so long. And when they finally decided to make it, they fumble. And they, then people fuck it up. And like, again, like you said, it's not really that the movie fumbled. Yeah, in the box office, it didn't do as well. But I think instead of being let down by the studio, we were let down by the fans. Which seems to be a growing trend. And that's because 
instead of listening to people who actually are fans, we got to listen to people who don't know what they're talking about. Fucking losers. Because, yeah, you can point out the things that are wrong with the movies. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. But, you're not going to sit here and just like, oh, well, this completely sucks. This phase is just terrible. Stop making it. What the fuck are you guys doing? It's, hey, CG, CGI on She-Hawk wasn't that good, but the storyline and everything was there and where it was needed to be, and it was overall a decently good show. <laughs> How dare you think such controversial thoughts? Because <laughs> hey, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed She-Hulk. Like, I thought it was a very good show. I didn't watch it. I, I know, there's... <laughs> There, I, there was just, I don't know, she's just not a character that I was, like, really invested in. I mean, me either, but I knew it, I knew it would have a lot, a lot of answers to a lot of questions that I had, and it did. <laughs> like, what's the whole feel with, you know, Robert Downey Jr. not being around no more, and what's the Avengers up to and everything like it had all the answers I needed at the time oh well that's good and I kind of knew that it would just because it's the off character of one of the main characters but you know One thing I'm really afraid for is Blade. I am not. You're not afraid for it? No. Why? Because it was Blade back in the day that saved comic book movies in general. Yeah, but... I feel like if it's necessary, Blade can do it again. What I'm not happy about is that I've read that for some reason... Even though the movie is called Blade, Blade is, like, apparently taking a back seat to, like, three other characters. What? Yeah. What other characters? I don't know. Like, apparently, like, he's not even, like, the main star of his movie. It's Blade. See, that's, that's what I was worried about. They're going to fucking ruin Blade. Okay, Floaty Island, base done. Like, especially for the first movie, like, yeah, you have the old man, and, but, you're reestablishing who Blade is, and you're connecting him into the Marvel Universe, like, they, they have to redo, like, his intro. At least a little bit, like, have a flashback or something, you know? And then you also have to establish how there's vampires in the MCU now. Well, that's, that's an easy thing to establish, because even in the original, like, the vampires were just in the, like, part of, like, the criminal underworld. Like, controlling shit from behind the scenes. Yeah, but... Like... As of right now, no one knows vampires exist in the Marvel Universe. So, like... They, they need a cool transition to how this guy is half-human, half-vampire. And he's kicking vampire ass, okay? <laughs> like... Like, I understand in the third blade, he had his team of people... You know, but, like, you can't start it off with the team of people. Unless, unless you're going for, like, a Blade and Friends name. Like, not, like, not that name, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, 
pick his group's name or whatever. But if you're going for, hey, Blake, then it needs to be Blake. See, I think what they're also, with Blade getting closer and closer to being released, they're also, I think they're going to start pushing towards another group movie that isn't like the Defenders or Avengers. It's called The Midnight Suns. That'd be cool. I don't know if you know about The Midnight Suns, but essentially they deal in like the realm of like the supernatural type shit and you know, magic and all that jazz. So what is gonna be uh play, Um uh, I think like uh maybe Moon Knight. Yeah, Moon Knight. Um I can't think of Echo would have to be in there too because she has powers. She's got powers now? Well, <laughs> cat's already out of the bag, Eric. Well, she's from an Indian tribe, and Echo is because her ancestors go through her, and each an- ancestor had a-, a special ability that Echo through her. So she oh. doesn't have superpowers, but they all had powers. Or like abilities that they were really good at that she can summon at any time she wants. Okay, that actually sounds kinda cool. Oh, I mean, it's, it's dope. Like, it's kinda funny it's kinda funny, really it's kinda funny that you, she's they're using uh, Indian powers to go through her cause like uh, one of the characters from the new season of What If was a uh, a Mohawk Indian Another cool thing for the movie is that, like they actually use the actual tribe in the movie. Like, of course they had Indian actors, but they filmed a lot of it with the actual tribe. Oh. So if you're a sucker for realism stuff like I am like that, it was a really cool thing to watch. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do dig some realism stuff. Like, Probably a end, big reason why I'm a big fan of like the Mission Impossible series. And at the end of the series, they have like a big, like special thank you to the tribe and to uh, Oklahoma for letting them do their shooting and everything there and with them. But I had zero expectations for Echo and. It, We've just kind of been on a tangent of superhero talk. Oh, uh, the, was it the Moon Brothers or whatever? Oh, the Moon Brothers. No, (laughs) it's the Midnight Suns. The Midnight Suns. Uh, but no, like, um, see, in, in the game that I have, the Midnight Suns, uh, some characters that could come into play within the MCU rather quickly uh, if they introduce them could be like um, Ghost Rider um, like I said we already got uh, Moon Knight um, thinking Blade definitely because he's also a part of the Midnight Suns um, uh, a couple of like uh X-Men characters could show up. Uh, there's one of them. Her name is uh, Ileana, but her mutant name is Magic. Um, she actually, as a child, both her parents died or something like that, and she was 
taken to uh, a realm within the world, but between worlds called Limbo by Mephistopheles, who, if you remember, is the same person that gave Daredevil his powers. Or not Daredevil, um, Ghost Rider. That's a character that could also be in the Midnight Suns, Daredevil. Um, but pretty much she can use this magic sword and it rips a hole within space time and she uh, can and she okay. can okay. go wherever she wants. Um uh, you know there's over a thousand different X Men. Yeah. I mean it sounds about right. Which A is cool, but B is also stupid. Like, cause I, I got an X-Men, uh, comic book forever ago, and it's about an X-Men who gets their abilities from doing drugs. And it's just like, y'all didn't have to go that hard on the X-Men, okay? Like, no, dude, there are some X-Men that gotta do some weird shit to activate their powers. Like, there was this one that I was reading about. She literally has to tear her own skin off anytime <laughs> she wants to use her powers. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, they went too hard on the X-Men. They, they could have they just simply said, like, had a base X-Men group and had simply said there's other X-Men out there and never touch on them. But they're like, no, we're actually going to turn these things into actual things. <laughs> and I don't understand it. And, and don't get me wrong, I like the X-Men and everything, but... one of those things they didn't have to elaborate as much as they did. <laughs> yeah, but you know if they didn't, there'd be somebody out there who'd be like, well, what is this? Yeah. Can't make everybody happy. I'm also upset that Deadpool's on the movie coming out this year. That doesn't sound right. Oh, it is because all the writer strikes and everything? They, uh... Now Deadpool's the only thing coming out this year. I think originally we were supposed to have two Avengers movies this year. No. That wasn't for a while. I, no, I wanted to say at least Secret of Wars was supposed to come out this year. Well, see, now I don't know. I'm worried about the future of Secret Wars and shit because they fired... Uh, Jonathan Majors. He's no longer... Yeah. Like, so, like, what? what's their plan? Like, are they going to recast Kang? Or are they gonna, like... Um, just completely forget about Kang? Well, there's one simple way they can do it. All they gotta do is have Deadpool go see him, kill every version of Kang. And he's the one character that can do it. Yeah. Because he kills every version of the Avengers. And then kills the writers. <laughs> Like, if there was... That's only 
only way I see possible because you can't recast the actor because Marvel doesn't do that. What are you talking about? Besides Hulk um, and one other person. I think there's only two people that ever recast it. Um, let's see. There's Hulk. There was Rhodey. Thanos. Uh, Thanos? Yeah. Like, it's not always been Josh Brolin. Well, they make it very hard to tell, though. Yep. Same way with Red Skull. The Red Skull you see in the first Captain America movie is not the same Red Skull that's in Infinity War and Endgame. Really? Yep. Hugo Weaving did not return. Quicksilver. That would no. That's that's X Men. We're referring referring specifically to the MCU. Or even then, they did bring in the original Quicksilver guy. Right, if we're counting that, we're counting that then. So there's been a few. They're not afraid to do it. That could just be held down to a multiverse then. Well, then technically they could just replace Kang with a different person and say it's the same Kang, just from a different multiverse. But... Yeah. But that does just because they can do that doesn't mean that they will or that a whoever they decide to replace them won't uh, be able to bring the same uh, level. Yeah, because he was a very good actor. Very believable in the role. Yeah. So it is going to find someone. It is going to be hard to find someone to fill his shoes for sure. Harder roles have been filled. But have they been filled well, though? That's so much. I mean, honestly, I didn't think anybody could be a better Professor X than Patrick Stewart, but James McAvoy did pretty decently. Same thing with Ian McKellen as Magneto and Michael Fassbender. They they filled the but roles pretty well. If I remember correctly, they just played younger versions of them, so that's not really hard to do. Is that a joke? Did you know that both Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart were knighted because of their acting abilities? Shit, Ian McKellen's been knighted like six different times. Well, I'm not saying I'm not saying they're bad actors. I'm saying that pulling off a younger version of an established character is usually easier than fully replacing an established character. I don't know. I feel like they both have their merits. Alright, you ready to wrap up? Yeah. All right, guys, next time we're going to be working back on the top side here. I'm going to go through with some moss and just mossify the area, give it this real overgrown look, use some leaves, kind of like dangle them over the side, make it look like vines. Um, but yeah, the island is relatively done. I guess the next thing I could do is start working out the chains. I don't know. know what I'm doing. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you had fun. And we'll catch you tomorrow, right? Tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. Dude, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> Normal times. See you then. Normal times. Well, on a Thursday and Saturday Friday. Bye. Bye.